Turn your Bible, uh, Book of Amos, Chapter 7. Book of Amos, Chapter 7, Verse 10 to 17. Amos chapter 7, verse 10 to 17. We're going to hear God's word together. Here's the word of God. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son. But I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Your wife shall be a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword. And your land shall be divided up with the measuring line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land. And Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. Amen. Scary. It's tough. Um, Since we shouldn't take this out of context and then uh, say that um, God is cruel, God, uh, he's not. And, you know, he's hard and he's intention, intention to really speak with his people. Um, since they are on the wrong track, wrong path, he is calling them back. Um, and sometimes, you know, um, we feel so weird and awkward and strange. Um, even though things are going well, uh, even though you know I'm doing things that I need, I need to do. I should do. We feel like something wrong with us, but even though uh, we don't even know why the reason. Sometimes you, if, if you drive your car and, you know, even though you push the gas, you know, it doesn't go. And you notice that side brake is on. Um, even though you go to church on Sunday, every day, every Sunday, every week, and you read the Bible and uh, you do the things that you need to do as a children of God. But, you know, you feel like something wrong. Something is wrong in my life, in my work of faith. We need to know that, we need to notice that maybe side break is on. We do have our church life. Same thing with them. People of Israel at the time, they uh, went to uh, King's Sanctuary, Bethel, and they tried to offer sacrifice. And everything, they did all the things that they need to do as a children of God, as a people of God. But something was wrong with them. Side break was on. Um, <clears throat> we, we listen to God's word every Sunday, right? We go back to the field on Monday and went back to our you know, home, family, um, it should be going well, but something is wrong. You, you might feel that way. We need to know the reason why. Um, is 
Não é? Attitude. T, não é? Um, it's going to be the, one of the reasons why something is wrong. Uh, this is a side break uh, for us. Our attitude towards God's word. Uh, this time we see a Messiah. He was a priest in Israel, Bethlehem. He was carrying out his job. But his attitude towards God's word, God's prophecy, was wrong. We need to check up on our, you know, spiritual state, our attitude, our hearts towards God's word. How do we take God's word? Even though we read the Bible, we listen to God's word, but what is our or my attitude towards God's word? Self-centered way to take God's word. A Messiah, he was a priest, right? He had a, his own way to take God's word. Self-centered way. He took Amos' prophecy in the way that he wanted to take. And then he said to uh, Amos, Oh, seer. You know, some kind of, you know, Joseph's brothers, you know, called Joseph. Oh, dreamer, he's coming, you know, something like that. Um, Amos got the message from God, and he prophesied to the people of Israel, even though he was from Judah. He prophesied to the people in Israel. And then he kind of, he envied what Amos was doing. And he couldn't even do that. And he tried to send him back to Judah. Don't try to come to Israel. Go back to your land, Judah, and prophesy there. So, think about it. God's word is sharper than double-edged sword. Right? If it comes to you, what's going to happen? Sometimes it hurts. Because if we need to have some kind of surgery on our print, imprints, roots, and nature, and God should have surgery on us, then we need to expect some kind of pain. But when God speaks to us, we have this kind of attitude. I don't want to hear that. That's why, you know, if you go out, there's a prosperity gospel. You know, they don't want to talk about sin because you don't like it. You know, for six days, you worked so hard and you're so tired and you want to, you know, come to the church and then listen to all the encouraging messages, right? Oh, you're good, man. You're future is bright. You're so precious, right? But we need to know where we are. You know, people of Israel, they went to temple, sanctuary, to worship God. But they try to get what they want to get instead of trying to know what God says. Is what I'm saying? In these days, a lot of Christians, especially young Christians, they want to take all the things that they want to hear. Even Apostle Paul warned them, warned the Christians uh, through his epistles. Material centered. He ignored God's word because of his desire to keep his position. All of a sudden, Amos came up to Israel 
and try to prophesy, I am the prophet of God. Even though he was, you know, taking care of, you know, sanctuary and everything as a priest. All of a sudden, Amos came and then prophesied about king, about Israel. What am I doing then? And people are listening to Amos. He, he got threatened, especially his position. And he said, eat bread there. You need to go back to your hometown, Judah, and eat bread there. Um, NIV translated into, earn your bread there. So this is my territory, man. Get out of here. This is our church. Get out of here. Mature center. So I am doing my job, priest. I need to survive here. I need to have something to do. But you are saying that I'm doing wrong. Get out of here. And go back to your land, Judah. It's all about his position. He's not interested in what God really says. But he was interested in keeping his position, social standings. Just like Pharisees. Many scholars kind of insist that um, many of them, Pharisees, they knew that Jesus was the Messiah. But he was doing really great things and then he was totally against what they were doing. So they got threatened. So they crucified Jesus Christ, even though they knew that he was Messiah. Mature center. Earn your bread, bread there, money. This is my territory. This is my thing. Never prophesy at Bethel. Success-driven way to take God's word. And he got to keep his position, right? And then he accused Amos to the king. Forcefully. And then he said, Amos is political uh, plotter. He's trying to do so many harm to our land, to our country. So he was kind of accuse Amos to the king. And he tried to please man, the king, instead of God. So he was trying to, you know, scratch the ear of the king because he wanted to hear, you know, this and that. You know, this land, you're doing good. You know, what, no matter what God says about Israel. We need to check up on our spiritual state. If sight break is on, then we're not gonna, you know, have smooth driving. Our attitude towards God's word. Am I picky to hear some words? And throw out some words. Because I don't want to hear that. What I want to hear is this and that. Mature center. If God says something. If that threatens your. What? Position. Then you want to ignore that. And success driven. You want to be successful. And then you. Accuse prophets, pastors, and spiritual leaders. This is the trends of this generation. God is speaking to us. Don't be in there. Don't get along with those people. And you need to go, come back and listen to God's word. You need to change your attitude. Towards God's word.
And Amaziah, he forgot to call, calling from God. Amaziah forgot his calling from God, and he was a priest. At Bethel. Major sanctuary in Israel. So he was uh, carrying out major job, uh, spiritually. But he became corrupted. He was looking for uh, his own job and money, his position. He tried to be successful. He wanted to really get the recognition from the kings. And he accused Amos. So many things corrupted. He didn't care what God wanted to uh, speak to his people, but care what he wanted, a uh, job. He was kind of gangster, right? This is my territory. You know? Don't even try to do anything in my territory. Get out of here. You know, there's a graffiti out there, right? This is my territory. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, we are not doing it, right? Uh, if you go to Korea, like, you know, within, a, within the same building, there's three churches. <laughs> you know, as a positive side, it's good. You know, so many pastors trying to share the gospel with people in that city. Uh, but more times, like, they're fighting over <laughs> their bread. Um, which is not good. We are not the gangsters, right? Christian gangsters, you know, <laughs> trying to, you know, extend the territory. We're not doing that. When I went to Chafee the other day, and I tried to share the gospel, and then I got the really in interesting response. Uh, when I try to uh, share the gospel, to the Christians. I didn't know that, and I tried to initiate the conversation. And then if they are Christians, then they act like, you know, what are you doing? I, I already know. Just leave me alone. That kind of attitude. So it was kind of hard for me to uh, talk to Christians. But when I talk to Muslim or Catholics or, you know, other religions or no religions, they are too open, so open to hear uh, the gospel. I was so, you know, I felt so strange. You know, if you're a Christian, you know, someone is trying to share the gospel in your field, then you'd be so thankful and encouraged. So, yeah, we got to do it and we'll get together. It's not like that. Uh, that's the age that we are living in. We have a lot of Amaziah in this country. If you forget the calling, you're going to you know, go through the same path of Israel, history of Israel. When God called Abraham through your seed, all nations will be blessed. So, you know, when God blessed Israel, they need to do what? World mission. Three years said, all nations will be blessed. And then they, you know, if they got blessed, then they need to go out and share their blessings with people because they are called to be a source of blessing. But they uh, develop their own ideology of being chosen. We are chosen. You're not, and you're a beast. I'm not going to get along with you. They had that, that kind of ideology, right? And they never, ever gone to other countries, especially if you know the history. You know, Samaritans, they were abandoned by Jewish. If they want to go to the, uh, the upper part of the you know, country, they went around. They don't want to step on the land of Israel. It's really wrong. 
That's why God sent them to the strong nations. Slavery in Egypt. Because they don't go to Egypt and share the gospel. God sent them to Egypt as a slavery. As a slave. That's why Joseph was able to share the gospel and proclaim how great God is to Pharaoh. Captivity in Babylon for seven years. Since they forgot the calling, mission, God sent them to Babylon as a captive. That's why we could see Daniel, right? And after that, Aster, Queen Aster. And those people were able to share the gospel to Persian king, uh, Babylonians, you know, and officials in Babylon, too. In the New Testament, they were colonized by Rome. God sent them to the strong nation to share the gospel. But the ways to get there is tough, painful. Slaves, captives, uh, they were colonized. So we need to really um, remember why God called us. Why we go to church? Why we go to school? Why do we work? We need to think about it. If you have this kind of attitude towards God's word, no choice but to forget the calling and commission that God has given us. Churches in these days have lost hold of their calling from God. They're fighting over, especially mega churches. And even uh, spiritual leaders, pastors, they have lost their calling, sense of, you know, calling. No choice. We're going to go through slavery, captivity, and colonization then. That's why God raised up Amos to speak to uh, people of Israel, religious leaders, spiritual leaders, to wake them up. And God is speaking to us today to wake us up somehow. God has called us a remnant, right? Remain ones. What am I doing? What kind of attitude do we have towards God's word? Am I really interested in what God wants? What God really concerned about? Think about your life. I don't know. Think about your past week. What was your interest? What we are think thinking. What did you try to make happen? What was your interest and passion? Do you have any attitude towards God's word? Because we literally forget about God's word. then you're going to change your object of worship. You're going to end up worshiping something else and someone else. That's what they're doing. It looks the same, but they are doing something else. Um... You know, I, I talk about this uh, several times, but if you go to um, Little Tokyo in L.A., right? And if you try to visit uh, Shinto temple or Buddhist temple of Japanese you know, town, and you'll be so surprised. And they're using the same term as church. 
They don't call them monk. They're reverend. This word. Some of we, we call pastors Reverend Park, Reverend, you know, Kim or something like that. So they call the leaders Reverend. And if you go there, uh, we don't have the church pew, right? This is individual sitting, right? Chair, chair but what do you call pew, right? Uh, they do have church pew. And only this part is uh, filled with the, some kind of idols, their own statues. I see future of the church in this country. Just like that. They do have church system, but they change the object of worship. Seems like you know they are praising God with the praise songs. But they are taking God's word in this way. Self centered way. Which worship, you know, changing object of worship is your priority, your value system. You know, the reason why I go to church to get something out of the church, out of God. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm asking God for this, and I'm anticipating to get it. I'm not really interested in knowing who God is and His will. And he's planned for me, but I set it up. I set up what I want, and I'm asking God, would you give it to me? You know what? I didn't skip the Sundays. I try to, you know, praise God. I try to serve the church in labor, as a praise team, as a media team, as something else. I'm, I'm serving the church, and, you know, God, give it to me. We are trying to make a deal with God. Then we are not worshiping God then. We don't have any fear towards God. What is your priority? These are the Satan's strategy. To make God's people down. Uh, we are surrounded by this culture. And this culture is coming into the church and Christian life, even remnants. We need to survive in this country, in this culture. And then save. Think about Amos. He went up to Israel. His hometown is Judah. He doesn't have any support, any backup. And then he faced a Messiah. You know, he was directly connected to the king. And he accused, right, Amos. And then he might be killed. You know, Isaiah, he prophesied to the people of Israel. And by his own people, he was accused. He was uh, persecuted. And then he was running away from his own people. And he hid in the, in the big old um, tree. The inside of was kind of empty. So he hid inside of the tree. And the people of Israel uh, cut him in half. You know, Amos might be facing that persecution, you know, kind of situation, life and death situation. But he was not compromising his faith, his calling. He was really firm. Be firm with your identity. Your background is not the king. Your background is just your parents, 
your background is God, the creator. So God has called you to be a remnant for this generation. He has called you as a, you know, his people, his belongings, his children. So that's your identity. Amos was so firm and, you know, uh, strong in that sense. So be firm with your identity. He said, uh, verse 14, Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor the son of the prophet, but I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. He was just ordinary man. He knew that. I didn't have any support. You know, you are a priest because you have priestly background, but I don't have it. I, I don't have it. But just God called me to prophesy these things to you guys. That's why I'm here. My backup is God. Even though he was threatened by priest Amaziah, but he was firm, strong. You know what? This is my identity. I'm a child of God. No matter what, I'm not going to compromise with these culture. Self center, material center, successful driven. Be faithful and strong to carry out the calling. If you be firm with your identity and uh, you're going to be faithful uh, for carrying out. He didn't flee but continued to prophesy. You know, remember uh, Nehemiah? He had a, a prophet prophesied to uh, Nehemiah. You know what? I heard that uh, someone is coming to kill you. So would you uh, run away from them to um, sanctuary, like a temple? There was, you know, kind of trap that he went to when it is you know, set up. So he didn't flee. Why am I you know, fleeing from this danger and crisis? I need to take care of these people too. I need to carry out my calling. So if you are firm with your identity, then you're going to be faithful to your calling. Um. Okay, it started from here. This is the most important thing. Because of their attitude towards God's word, it caused this. So, you know, this morning, God spoke to us too. Um, we need to be healed because we do have wrong imprints, root and nature. You know, we are controlled by the law of sin and death. We are sinful. If you really, really have a good attitude, like rightful attitude towards God's word, which means meditate upon God's word, ponder upon God's word, because that's the truth. The other ones are lies, deceptive. So we're not going to listen to that, but I'm going to really focus on God's word, truth. If you have that attitude, then you're not going to have this. You're not going to follow these cultures, and you're not going to have this result and consequences. Amos was able to survive and save the nation. Um, I know that it's going to be tough for you guys because you might feel that I'm the only one in this campus kind of trying to share the gospel and trying to really keep my faith. It's not going to be easy, I understand. Because, you know, Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight. So there is a fight going on, right? So we need to fight against 
that kind of culture too. And there's a race to take. He said, I have finished the race. At the end, he said, I kept the faith. So I know it's, it's going to be tough, but you need to really uh, set it up. What kind of attitude do I have towards God's word? Um, God's word became what? Flesh. That is Jesus Christ. My attitude towards Jesus. My attitude towards God. Do you really believe that God is speaking to you? Even though this, you know, ugly guy is standing here, you know, trying to, you know, convey God's word. Do you believe that God is speaking to you? That attitude. Even though the pastors, leaders might be really weak, not that perfect, but God is able to convey His word to you guys, and He's speaking to you. We need to have rightful attitude towards God's word. I think the reason why this nation is being corrupted is because of this. You know, they got rid of the Bible class from the public school. And then they took out the Ten Commandments out of the Supreme Court. You know, even though it's not, it's a simple action, but behind of that, there are a lot of you know things are going on in this country. They are they are making the laws totally against God's word. That's the attitude. We don't need to follow that, right? Then do we need to have. Uh, do we have strength and power to go against it just like Amos survive and save this generation? No. That's why we need to receive the strength and power from the Word of God. There's not the way, the other way around. So, um, be successful to um, your public worship uh, and individual worship, personal worship. So uh, you need to set up that system. Um, you need to have rifle, really correct attitude towards God's Word. Let's pray. Don't be satisfied with the fact that uh, I didn't skip the Sundays. If that, if that is your some kind of uh, level, then um, it's okay. But <laughs> I don't see you guys with that level. We are here to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Right? We are not the crowd looking for some kind of food to eat. Oh, He is able to heal. So I don't need to go to hospital. Then we are the crowd. We are self-centered. Material center. We are here to be successful. I don't want you to become a crowd. A disciple of Jesus Christ. Sometimes you need to sacrifice. You need to choose God over your benefits. Sometimes you need to give up on your rights, benefits, for the sake of God's will. That's why Apostle Paul said, I consider everything rubbish. I want to really get to know Jesus Christ. That's my priority, top priority. Lord, I want to really get to know you more. That's our ultimate conclusion. Every time, why are you talking about getting to know God more and more? Because that's everything. Apostle Paul said, even though these things are so beneficial to me, but I consider them rubbish. Because of surpassing knowledge of Christ. I want you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. 
survive and with the strength save this generation. We are few, but we are strong when God is around us, if God is with us. Lord, um, please help me out. Um, I fall down so many times. I get deceived so many times. I got distracted so many times. But here I am. I'm kneeling down before you. I'm asking for your mercy and grace. Through it all, in and out of season, would you let me, allow me to get to know you Lord, throughout every incident, every happenings, including my mistakes, including all the past scars that I have. Let's pray together.